Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I want to apologize. This is not my regular voice. Um, it's, uh, no one would believe me if I say what happened. Um, I got allergic reaction to pistachio, which is impossible for an Afghan to get allergic reaction to pistachio, because I think we used to do our tahrik with pistachio just to get things started. Uh, all our lives we eat pistachio almost on daily basis, but alhamdulillah, something I really loved, I can't eat anymore. But it's been a couple of weeks that, inshallah, they said another week or so I should be back to normal, but we'll see. Anyways, these are the days of, uh, final days of Ramadan. One of the things about Ramadan is that the primary purpose of it is very clear in the Quran that we have revealed this month, what is the purpose, the primary purpose? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُمْ In order that you may gain consciousness of God. Taqwa is to be aware that Allah is with you all the time and He's watching you all the time. That is the reality. That is the reality. But your awareness becomes taqwa. The reality is Allah is watching you Allah is with you all the time. But when you come to that understanding, when you come to say, Allah is with me, then that is you become a muttaqi in that moment. But there are secondary, there are other purposes that we understand and feel for the people who don't have enough food to eat. And we always remind our children that when iftar time comes, subhanAllah, look, there are people if thought comes, they don't even have food to break their fast. They might have to just break it with water and bread. So we have that food. So we remind ourselves about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's given us. And about those people who are less in status than us. And the reason why it's important to look at those who are lower than you than those who are higher than you, so it will put you in the state of shukr. Shukr is one of the highest stations that you're in the state of gratitude. Ya Allah, thank you for blessing me with these blessings. But one of the things that I really truly admire about Ramadan, and I love this, it's my, my favorite in the month of Ramadan, is that this is the only month that you really can come to understand yourself, to know yourself. Maulana Rumi in the Fihi Mahfi, he says something very interesting. He said, look at human being. He said, we can take the hair out of a dough. We split the cell. We turn the human cell into a football field and we go into it with our microscope to see what is inside of the cell. We know the distance between here and Mars. We know the distance between the earth and the moon and the sun. We, we know what the stars are made of. We know the rocks of Mars and, and moon. We have, we have all of these knowledges about the trees, about the plants, about the, the animal kingdom, about the heavens and the earth, everything. And yet, majority of us will die not knowing ourselves. Majority of us will die not knowing ourselves. And knowing yourself is, why is it important in our tradition to know ourselves? Mu'adh al-Razi, rahmatullah alayhi, said, Man arafa nafsahu, faqat arafa rabbahu. Whoever came to know himself, came to know Allah. It is through yourself that you will come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you don't know yourself, and this is why it's, the, it's important to know not just the physical self, because there are layers of knowledge of yourself. In the modern world, the, the young generation, the Gen Z's and, and, and all, the, the past, I would say, two generations, they know the self from the outward perspective so well that I don't think that we had any understanding. They know which, which uh, color of makeup would look perfect on their skin from the plethora of colors of hundreds of colors that are all, almost the shade, the same shade, but they know which one would look perfect on their, on, on their face, right? We know that from amongst 100 perfume, which is the one that actually we love the most. 
Well, they all might smell the same, most of them. We know all of the self. This is not the self that the ulama talk about. The real self is that which Raghab in in the, said something really beautiful. He said that, that look at the human face. One of the most amazing things about the human face, and this is why it's prohibited to hit someone in the face, because we are created this face, the wajh, because all of, almost every attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a human face. Allah is al-mutakallim. He speaks, it's in our face, we speak. Allah is all seeing, we see, it's in our face, the eyes. Allah is all hearing, we can hear. But here's the thing, when you're sad, why do I see that in your face? When you're happy, why do I see that in your face? When you're angry, why do I see that in your face? All of these emotions that are inside of you, they all manifest in your face as well. So not just knowing the outward, but knowing the sources of those. And this is the problem with our, you know, we put, we put, uh, there's a, we don't go to the source. We don't go to the source. Uh, all of your life, Ghalib says, the great Indian poet, Oh Ghalib, you made this mistake all your life. The dirt was on your face and you're wiping the mirror. And this is many people, this is what they do, they wipe the mirror. They don't, they don't want to go inside. Why don't we want to go inside to take this journey? Why do people want to go inside? To find out who they are. Because for some of us, the journey is scary to go in. We don't want to go in because of what we have done. But here's the secret of this religion. The secret of this religion is that with all of the darknesses that are inside of each and every one of us, no matter what we have done, because the nature of sin is darkness. In the nature of darkness is its multiplicity. You have a thousand different darknesses, not one. If you turn off the, the lights in these rooms, there are layers of darknesses. But when you turn on one light, all darknesses disperse with the nature of one. Because the nature of Tawheed is when it comes, everything that's not Tawheed has to move out. Everything has to go. When unity comes, multiplicity disappear. How do we get this journey, the inward journey? Maulana, when, when he met Shafs at Tabriz, he took him on the inward journey and he said, it's difficult, please don't take me, it's hard. How am I gonna go through this to know myself? And Shams taught him something. He said, just, take the, just go inward, I'll show you something and that thing will help you. He said, what is that? He said, there's a light. He said, what do you mean there's a light? He said, Kamari John Sefate Darrahi Del Paidoshut, Darrahi Del Chilatifa Safar. He He said, I went inward and I saw this illuminating moon inside of me. And when I looked, everything was illuminated. And Rumi said, Oh my. What a beautiful journey. What a gentle and beautiful journey is the inward journey. Most of us, we don't want to turn on the light. Most of us, we don't know we have a moon inside. Most of us, we don't have someone to help us, to show us our moon. Well, one of the things that Shams uh, Tabriz did to Rumi, he didn't turn on the light for him. He just showed him his own moon. And that is a sign of a great teacher. They don't give you a fish. They teach you how to fish. That is a sign of a great teacher. So in this month, why is this, this month unique in knowing yourself in comparison to the other month? The reason why, in the maktubat of Sheikh Ahmed Sarhindi, the great Mujaddid Al-Fathani, uh, who's buried in Sarhind, India, he wrote, he said that human beings are created, there's two essences in you. One is heavenly, alam al-amr. One is earthly, alam al-khalq. So he said you are created from these two. Alam al-amr, 
على ما خلق بمجرد امر كل على ما ظهر بمجرد امر كل he said the alam al amr this the 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 heavenly reality when allah said be and it was and that is he said there are five things but we won't go over the five but the most important thing is your ruh your qalb got it your ruh your qalb and then it said it's your sir your mystery your khafi and your ikhfa the, the mysteries of the human of the human being but alam al khalq has five things as well it's the four elements that we were created from we were created from everyone knows the four elements right hot cold wet dry water fire earth and wind so those are the four elements that we were created from in the nafs the nafs is not from heaven the nafs is not heavenly the nafs is earthly the ruh is heavenly so sheikh ahmed sir hindi said all your life is a tug of war one pulls to this side who's pulling to this side it's the fourth element pulling down in the nafs why because they're made from earth and they feel good at earth they love shopping they love eating they love overeating they love over shopping they love everything that has to do with the dunya all of the shahwat of the dunya they love it but the ruh your ruh and your sir are not from the dunya no matter how much you give them of the food of this world you cannot satiate them the ruh needs the zikr that's what it needs and if you don't do zikr you're starving your spirit just like if you don't eat you starve your body and then your qalb your heart so the problem throughout the 11 month is one thing these earthly your four element in the nafs they have a big helper shaitan they have a big helper it's kind of make it they say make it unfair it's not unfair but it's a little bit the shaitan and the whispering but allah in this month locks up the shayateen of jinn they're locked up if you for me you know when i first thought went to college i was really confused about the, about life and i wanted to really choose a religion i really wanted to choose a religion i said whatever religion makes sense i'm going to choose this so i took a um a class on comparative religion and they were teaching <clears throat> word religion by um, Houston Smith I didn't even know Houston Smith was a muslim <clears throat> we read that book and starts with you know Christianity and Judaism and Buddhism and Hinduism and Jainism Confucianism all of them and and the edition that we read back in the days like 20 some years ago 30 years ago it was um Islam was the last chapter and I loved it because I really didn't wasn't interested in that until the end I said let me let me know about all these other religion because we grew up in a country where there was only one religion we thought that was it in here in America you see all these your friends are Buddhist and one is a Hindu one is a Jain and one is a Christian what is it so I'm like whoa what is this I want to know and one of the things that really struck me about this was Ramadan because Ramadan came and not only me everybody was a good muslim everybody was getting up for fajr everybody was doing all five daily prayers everybody was going to the quran and i'm like wait a second how is this possible how is that possible who's doing that who's doing that why can i get up that easily for fajr outside ramadan when i get up like that in ramadan why is it that i can go a whole day without eating if i don't have my my chai by 10 a.m i'm grumpy the whole day i people know this i have to have my chai i don't have chai but i'm still going through the day doing my work all of that who is doing this this is the proof of the religion one of the one of the people in in prison told our sheikh when he was doing prison uh, outreach and he said he said why did you become muslim he said i tried every religion and i said whatever religion is the truth it will help me sm- uh, quit smoking he was a smoker cigarette he couldn't quit 
He said, I became a Buddhist. I became a Christian. I became a Jew. I became every, I was going to every religion. I said, I want to be part of you. As long as you make me quit this cigarette, I'll, I'll be part of your religion. And he said, none of them help. I became Muslim. Ramadan came. I didn't smoke for a month and I quit. And I said, this is the true religion. But this month is really, there's so many merits in it. But the biggest thing that you can take out of this month, and especially in these last days, is really come to know yourself. If you were doing bad things before Ramadan, whatever it was you're doing, and you're not doing it during Ramadan, know that your essence is good, but shaitan got the best of you. Know that your essence is good, you're good, but shaitan has the best of you. Once Ramadan is over, you will go back to that if you don't make a change. You will go back because shaitan is going to come. He's going to bring the same circumstances to put you in that trap. He has the game plan already. He's waiting for, for the night of Eid. The game plan is already done. He knows how to get you because he's gotten you before. The only way you can get out of that is for you to come to know yourself. What makes you happy? Not the happiness. See, I had a friend who I thought like, like this person was the happiest person on the planet. Honestly, I've never seen a person laugh so much, sometimes so much laughter that it would annoy me. That I would tell people, tell this person, calm down, too much laughter. And there's all joy in the air, happiness in the air. And then so many years pass by, then I get a call uh, that this person attempted suicide, but survived. So I was doing some counseling. I realized that all of that was depression. The person was actually depressed, but trying to laugh their way out of this world. That's not how it works. Happiness is not the laughter of the mouth. It is the smiles of the heart. And that's many hearts are weeping and crying, but people are trying to laugh to show other people that they're happy. They are not living for themselves. They don't know who they are. People don't know who they are. And if you don't know who you are, you would never, ever be happy. You would not even taste happiness. You would not even taste happiness because we will not do what makes us happy. We will always do things to make other people happy. We will live our life for other people. And other people would never, ever be happy with you. This is the nature of the world. The nature of the world. They would never. Nobody would ever know you. Nobody. If you think somebody would know you, you're dreaming. Your parents would never know you. Your parents would never know you. Your children would never know you. This is the cry of every... I stopped doing counseling many, you know, because it just drains you. So like three, four people left. Once they're on their way, I'm done. But one thing that I always got from children, oh, mom doesn't understand me. Dad doesn't get me. 14-year-old kid, mom doesn't get me. Dad doesn't get me. Parents come crying. My daughter doesn't understand me. My son doesn't understand me. Well, here's the answer. They're not supposed to. They're not supposed to. Allah has made it that way. Because if you can find solace in this dunya, if you can find someone so you can lean on them, you can lean on them, then why would you forget about Allah? Everyone in your entire life is a detour to Allah. Everywhere you go, road is closed. Go this way. Road is oh, Why is this road closed? My house is right there. No, 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 go this way. Detour. All of those detours lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All roads lead to God. And Allah is doing that. And they would never know you. So don't waste your time trying to explain yourself. And this is why so many of the young people, they tell their secrets to their best friends. Right? And then a year later, two years later, they end up saying, oh my God, I had people who were literally suicidal because they said something to someone and that someone, when their friendship went sour, told other people. 
is one of the poets said that he said, don't tell your um, your secret to your best friends because your best friends have best friends. So that's how it, that's how it works. So they will tell other people because it's the nature of the human being. I don't know if you guys know the story, but the Alexander the Great, uh, they say Alexander the Great haircut was in the way that nobody saw his ears because he had really big ears. His ears would drag up to like his really bad, ugly, big ears. But he had this haircut that would cover it and nobody's ever seen it. So his, the guy who does his haircut dies. So they try to hire somebody else. They find the best haircut guy, this young guy come in and they say, there's only one thing. He said, what? He said that, you know, when you see his ears, you can't talk about it to anyone. And if you do, you'll be killed. Your entire family will be killed. He said, no, of course I wouldn't say anything. This is Alexander the Great. So they hired him as the haircut. And he first haircut that he gives, he's shocked seeing his ears. And he's just trying to control himself. So he gives the nice haircut. A day passed, a week passed, a month passed, a year passed. He can't hold it. He said, I got to tell somebody. And this is why sometimes we say, we got to get out of our chest. We got to share it with someone. So he says, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He says, you know what? I just have to say it. If I say it and just get out of my chest, it's good. So he goes outside the city. He goes in the middle of the desert. And there he finds a well, a water well. And he puts his head inside of the well. He said, Alexander the Great has really long, ugly ears. So he shouts this. Oh, man, that feels really good. I got it out of my chest. Comes a few Time passes by, so this traveler comes into the town, and he says, hey, did you guys hear Alexander the Great has really long, big, ugly ears? And everybody's saying, they hear the news, they get this guy, they bring him, bring the barber. The barber comes in, he chop his head off. He said, why is it you told people? He said, I swear to God, I would never do that. I haven't told a soul. So he says, but how does this man on the street saying that he knows that Alexander has? So they bring the man. He said, how do you know this? He said, you know what? I went, I was traveling. And I was taking water from a well. And I heard this echo from the well that said Alexander the Great has really long, big, ugly ears. So the moral of this story is, doesn't matter who you tell, somebody will come out. So if you don't want anyone to know something, don't tell anyone keep it in your heart keep it in your heart simple as that so coming back to knowing yourself why is it important to know yourself because through knowing yourself you will know Allah Iqbal Rahmatullah Ali said in the Persian line he said as hamak as kenaragir sohbat aashina talab ham as khuda khudi talab ham as khudi khuda talab he said abandon everyone and seek the companionship of the only familiar one, which is Allah. Then seek to know God through yourself and seek to know yourself through the light of God. So if you know yourself, you will get to know Allah. And when you know Allah through that light that illuminates your heart, you will get to know who you are. They go together, knowing yourself and knowing Allah. And what a shame it would be that we live our lives and we get to know everything in the world. And we get to know everyone. And we need to learn philosophy. We get to learn mathematics. We get to learn science and history. Right? And yet, someone asks us, who are you? We don't know. If you don't know where you came from, where you're at, and where then are you going? These are the three Quranic questions where you came from, where you're at, and where then are you going? The Quran asks, where then are you going? Where do you think you're going? Hey, Mawlana Rumi knew it well. He knew it perfectly. He said, I have the one button home GPS. Follow me. Right? Uh, they ask, we ask in, in the 90s from Sheikh Muhammad Yaqubi, the way to enter paradise. What is the easiest way to enter paradise? He said, turn right, go straight. Turn right, go straight. Qul amantu billah, thumma 
say I believe in Allah, and then stand by that. Be upright. Stand by that. Get to know yourself. Many people will really get to know themselves in the grave, which is very sad. It's very sad to know yourself in the grave. But if you know yourself, there are a few benefits. But the greatest benefit of knowing yourself, young people, is this. No one can buy you out. No one can buy you. Because you realize your worth. Your value. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. The Quran says, we have ennobled the children of Adam. There's a nobility about you. That Allah says, that I've bought you and in return, paradise. For paradise. Will you sell yourself for a few moments of pleasure? Will you sell yourself for a few dollars? Or a house? Or a car? Or anything? They asked Mawlana Rumi, they said, you have evaluated everything. Give us the evaluation of the human being. What's the worth of the human being? He said, he said, Oh human being, you're more expensive than this world in the hereafter put together. How sad you don't know your own value. How sad you don't know your own value. Don't ever sell yourself cheap because Allah has offered you already paradise, a place where no eyes has ever seen anything like it. No ears has ever heard anything like it. No mind has ever imagined anything like it. Can you imagine the sound of paradise? You know, once my friend put a, uh, he got a Dr. Dre Beats. He said, have you seen this? I said, man, the last time I put on these things, I used to have a Walkman back in the days with those headphones. He said, no, no, try this. And in all honestly, I'm like, wow. Just the quality of sound. Unreal. But what about the quality of sound of paradise that no ears has ever heard anything like the music of paradise? What about the beauty of paradise that even imagination, right? People go and see Avatar, the movie, and they're in awe, like just in cinematography. But imagine paradise that you can't even imagine it. That's how beautiful it is, right? You can't even imagine it. Imagine the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. مَا رَأَتْ عَيْنٌ وَلَيْسَ تَرَى مِثْلَ طَاحَ فِي الْوَرَى بَشَرَى No eyes has ever set on a face like the face of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine seeing that. You're going to make yourself mahroom, deprived, from seeing the face of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for a moment of pleasure to sell yourself cheap right is that what we're going to do what is this face what is this face it's a face qad nara taqallub wajhika fi sama that's the face when the prophet sallallahu alaihi went to medina the qibla changed because they used to pray towards Jerusalem. But the Prophet always wanted to pray towards Kaaba. It was in his heart. But he never asked. He never asked. Adab with Allah. Highest adab. No one had more adab in the history of creation than our Prophet ﷺ. Allah has taught me adab and how beautiful he has taught it to me. Imagine the adab that is taught by God perfection of the human being. He wanted the Qibla to be changed, but he didn't ask. What did he do? In the prayer, right? Because some of the Jews, not all of the Jews in Medina, we had a lot of Jews that became Muslim and a lot that supported in the the pact with the Prophet ﷺ. But some of them gave him a hard time. And they said, you have a new religion, why do you pray towards our Qibla, towards Jerusalem? You have a new religion, why do you pray this way? The Prophet was really hurt, and he wanted the Qibla to change. In the prayer, he raised his face, 
towards heaven. Literally, he went like this. And immediately, before he could put his face down, Allah sent Jibreel from Sidratul Muntaha. This is the furthest place any creature has ever gone, except the Prophet ﷺ that passed that. Even Jibreel can't go no more from there. Sidratul Muntaha, the furthest limit, the tree of the furthest limit. That's where Jibreel is. Go down before my beloved put his face down. We know why you turned your face towards the heaven. We know. You don't say anything. We will change this qibla toward the qibla of your desire. So turn thy face towards Masjid al-Haram, towards the Kaaba. The Prophet ﷺ turns exact opposite way. In the Jama'ah, while praying, all of the companions, they turn, go behind them, continue their prayers. They don't say like, oh, why are you doing this? This is the station of love. The station of love, the obedience, is not because you have to, it's because you want to. That's the difference. Obedience of the king is because you have to do it. Obedience to your boss, because you have to do it. Obedience to the one you love, you want to do it. You want to do it. It's your desire. So he turns his face, and Allah brings the Kaaba right in front of him. Some people say, how does it, how does the Kaaba come? This, some of these, you know, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنْ هُوَ الْحَقِّ We will show our signs. We will show our signs on the horizon and on themselves until it manifests in that Allah is real. God is real. Allah is real. He's Al-Haq. When I first time I saw this thing become a reality, this thing really came, oh my God, was the first time I saw a 3D movie. Because I kept doing this. I thought it was right in front of me. But it was probably a hundred feet away from me on the screen. And it wasn't. So if Hollywood can do that, Allah can't do it. If Hollywood can do it, Allah can't do it. These are all signs. So he sees the camera in front of him like a 3D movie in front of him. So he adjusts his chest to the Kaaba. And that is the most accurate Qibla on the planet Earth. Masjid Qibla Tain in Medina. Most accurate Qibla on the Kaaba. Because all of the Qiblas are for him in Mecca, not to the Kaaba. Ain al Kaaba is impossible. So, that is the face. Who doesn't want to see that face? Who, like, who doesn't want to see that face? You know, poets, they... One thing about the poets is that they make things more beautiful than they are. It's the nature of poets. Like, if they write a poem about the stage here, you feel like, oh my God, what a stage it was. Because they would embellish. But the poet said, he said, "Ay chehrei zibai tu rashke botana ozari, har chan wasfat mi kona dar husn azan zibai tari." He said, "Great Indian poets." He said, "Oh, oh, messenger of Allah, your face is so beautiful that every model of the world is jealous of your face. And no matter how much I praise you, and I'm a poet and I can praise really well." I still fall short of praising. Afaq ra gardidam, mehre butan varzidam, bisyar khuban didam, amma tu chizi dikari. I went through the cosmos, I went all over the world. I've seen the most beautiful models, I've seen people of akhlaq, I've seen people of beauty. But you, O Messenger of Allah, you are in a league of your own. 
Here's something else. هرگز نیاید در نظر نقش زرویت خوبتر Imagination I can't imagine anything a form more beautiful than your face شمسی ندانم یا قمر هوری ندانم یا پری Are you the illuminating sun? Are you the illuminating moon? Are you a maiden of paradise? What are you? This is Amir Khosrau And at the end he says, Khosrau غریب است و گدا افتاده در شهر شما. Khosrau is a غریب, is, is a, and he's a, he's a beggar. He's a beggar and a strange person came in from, from the land far away. And he came to your city in Medina Munawara. باشد که از بحر خدا سوی غریبان بینگری. And I hope that you may have a glance toward this poor soul in your city. And there were lovers like that who loved the Prophet that the city, the dirt of that city, the dirt of that city was like coal in their eyes. The people who walked barefoot in Medina, they never put on shoes. They, did, they, were, they stayed there, they never put on shoes. There are people right now There are people right now that we know that they never fly to Medina. They never fly. So how could we fly over the Prophet? The people that we know, they never sleep in Medina. They come to Ziyarah and leave out of, just how am I going to sleep when my legs are crossed in Medina? And the city, the Jiwat, where is the, is the neighborhood of the Prophet? So you don't want to be in that neighborhood in Jannah with him forever by just a moment of pleasure to sell yourself cheap. This month comes to teach us our value, to teach us who we are, really to teach us who we are, where we came from, where we are at, and where are we going. And I swear by Allah, no matter what you have done in your life, this night, These nights of Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr, can wipe your entire lifetime of sinfulness, of disobedience, and make you pure like the day you were born. And don't think that you missed Laylatul Qadr or that you will miss Laylatul Qadr. Don't think that way. Every single one of you, don't think that way. Ana inda abdi zanni bi. Hadith Qudsi says, Allah says, I am in the opinion of my servant. How he or she thinks of me, I'll manifest myself in that way. Every one of us, inshallah, either we caught it or we'll catch it. Right? But no, no, that Allah can make any night for you, Laylatul Qadr. One of my teachers said, he said, the real Laylatul Qadr is when you realize the power of Allah. That moment, Allah will make that night Laylatul Qadr for you. When you realize you, your connection to Allah, when you realize your dependency to Allah, when you realize that He is your Rabb and you're His servant, when you realize that that calling that He says, my servant is the greatest name for you, Whatever title they give you in the dunya, no matter what the highest title that you can get in this dunya, it, it's annihilated with the title that Allah gives you. Abd, Abdullah, my servant. You are my servant. You are my servant. This is the greatest. And this is why Khaj Abdullah Ansar will end with this. Khaj Abdullah Ansari, the great sage who died in 481, buried in the city of Herat in Afghanistan, what the great Sufi master said. He said in his munajah, he said, Ilahi, agar bagui bandayman, as arsh begzarat khandayman. He said, Ya Allah, If you just say you're my servant, I'll be so happy that the carrier of the arsh will hear my laughter. I'll be so happy. 
Just call me. The fact that you say, I'm your servant. That's all I want, to be your servant. Because that is the true freedom. If you're not a servant of Allah, you're an abd dinar abd dirham you're the servant of silver and gold, materialism. You're the servant of your shahwa, your desire. You're the servant of your boss. You're the servant of your wife. You're the servant of your husband. You're the servant of... Allah will make you servant to everything in this world if you don't, if you don't become a servant. If you don't make sajda for Allah, ye ek sajda jese tu gira samajta hai, hazar sajda se ditai adami ko najat. This one sajda, you do for Allah, you think, oh my God, I'm doing so much, I have to pray. That one sajda alleviate you from a thousand unnecessary sajda that Allah can make you humiliate you in front of everybody else. But his servitude, that is the real freedom. That is the real freedom. Do not become Abdul Jinnar Darham. Have the wealth of this world, be rich, be millionaires, be billionaires. Have every, have the dunya in your hand and not in your heart. Leave your heart for Allah and for yourself. Leave the heart to know yourself and to know Allah. And have the dunya in your heart, in your hand. That's all you want to do. And make sure that the dunya that you have in your hand, it's moving constantly. One of this, uh, in the Rasalat al-Qashairiya, it said, I was reading that, earlier and one of the masters said he said it, it's like the, the wealth is like water if it keeps going it's always fresh and good but if it's still it goes bad so make sure you spend it you don't hoard the wealth it's always you're spending it and you get more inshallah ta'ala especially spending it for good causes inshallah especially on these days of night of ramadan may Allah bless all of you may Allah protect you in these blessed nights. If there's any questions or clarification or comments, and then we'll make a dua, and then inshallah, I think uh, one of the brothers is going to lead um, Surah Al-Mulk, and then there's going to be Salat Al-Tasbih, right? Yeah. I have the mic if everybody has a question. I think they're too tired. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, sisters, we have sisters trying to get in. Could you come forward, please? Brothers are okay. Sisters, I think there's sisters at the door. The sisters, if you start moving a little closer to the stage, thank you. I guess there's no questions, Ustad. All right. Assalamu alaikum. for a beautiful talk. Um, I had a question, so I think you made a really good point, like finding oneself. But uh, I have a question more like tactically, how do you do that? How do you actually go about what are some steps you take Very to go in and find yourself? Very good question. How do you find yourself? So I'm writing something on that topic, inshallah. Hopefully I can publish it soon. But just to, um, the first thing to find yourself and to know yourself. I wholeheartedly believe, this is my belief, it could be wrong, there's no foundation for it. If you don't have, if you don't take 30 minutes a day for yourself, you're not living life. Don't call it life. If you don't take 30 minutes, what I call me time, me time, that time is super important. And for every person is different. Everybody's different. Uh, some people, it's a walk. They just want to go out, go for a walk. They have their flashcard with them, memorize something. They have their headphone, listening to Quran. They have nothing. I don't listen to anything when I go for my walks. Reflecting on nature. Everybody has something. Some people, they go in the corner of their room, reflect, close their eyes. No you two human beings are the same. And that's what I had in. The Prophet said, human beings are like mines, copper mines, gold mines, diamond mines. Everybody's different. So there's not a formula for one. One of my students, we were in, we were in, uh, we were in Malaysia, asked me a similar question. 
And then, so I told him that you have to have me time and find yourself. But you have to find a place where you feel at ease, where you don't feel like you have to Photoshop yourself. See, the problem with us is we always have to filter ourselves because especially the a generation that grew up on Instagram where everything is filtered. They never see reality in its true form. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allahumma arini al haqqa haqqa wa razuqni tiba. Ya Allah, show me the reality in its true form, unfiltered. I want to see the reality in its true form. What is true is true, what is falsehood is falsehood. And give me the ability to follow it. And show me falsehood in its true form, not filter. And give me the ability to stay away from it. So that is one of the big problems. A moment where you don't need filters. You don't need filters. There's nobody there. It can't. I mean, it gets to a point, and this is in the, Shai Naqshban said, Khilwat dar anjuman. You know? Privacy in the gathering. That's the highest station where you could be sitting there with all these people, but you're, you're not even here. Physically, you're here. Spiritually, you're somewhere else. Right? That's a high station that people will get to that station. But you have to start by being in a place that is only you and you feel at home in that place. So one of my students uh, said, um, young, young, younger. So anyways, I met her maybe like that. Six, seven months later, I had a talk in a masjid in an Islamic center. And she was there and she came. He goes, what are you doing? Wallahi, that thing you said about 30 minutes a day for yourself, me time. I found myself. Look at my hands. And she had all blisters on her hands. And I'm like, oh God, what happened? Like, What did I teach you? So anyways, he goes, no, no. I realized the place that I felt comfortable was on a swing. So I go every day and swing in the rope, actually. It, my hands are all as blister. But he's been doing it for like months. And I have a swing in the backyard. And I go, and it's the most relaxing thing for me. And alhamdulillah, no complaints. She was happy. Everything was fine. She was focused on what she wanted to do in life. But not everybody should go on a swing to find themselves, right? But everybody has to find a place. For me, when I was in high school, I went through some trying time, you know, first, first generation, not understanding the language, uh, being in this country, um, not doing anything, honestly. Um, I, so I, I had really um, some difficult, uh, I would say, months, you know, almost semester. So I remember Mr. Gallardo. I think he's the only person I remember to... to Three people, three names from my high school teachers. But Mr. Gallardo was my counselor. And he told me one day, he said, did you get your job license? I said, yes. I was in 11th grade. He said, yeah, I got my license. And he said, um, he said uh, go to San Francisco. And I'm like, whoa, that's, I've never been to San Francisco without the family. He said, no, no, go to San Francisco. And go give me an address to go by the beach, sit and reflect on water for two hours and just reflect by your life and about this. And that was like really game changer for me, just seeing the creation of Allah just without any distraction. And, and it really helped me out, the water. For some people it's the water, for some people it's the night sky, it's camping. They would go and I know that people came to Islam through night sky. I know that for a fact. But the night sky, it boosted their iman just seeing the stars. Right? And got to know themselves. So finding yourself is really knowing how insignificant you are and how significant you are at the same time. That is the secret of knowing yourself. To know that that's so you're, the insignificant part comes not to get arrogant. The significant part comes so you don't feel like, oh my God, I'm nothing, I can't do anything. That you would see that you are the cream of the crop. You are the best of Allah's creation. You are the highest of Allah's creation. You are the, you're the middle creature, create creatures. You're the middle creatures. Allah has created the biggest thing and the smallest thing, and we are in the middle. Right? There's a, there's a beautiful video, it's called... Everyone should watch this. It's like a short video. It's called The Power of Ten. 
the power of 10. And there's a video on this family in a park. And then it zooms out 10 times. And then you can see the whole park. And then zooms out 10 times. You can see the whole city. Then zooms out 10 times. You can see the whole country. Zooms out. And then there's, you see the earth. And then keeps zooming out 10 times. And then you see the whole galaxy. And the whole cosmos becomes like a little dot. And then he zooms back in to the people. And then he zooms in 10 times into them. And you would see that the reality of everything you saw outwardly is inwardly as well. It's inside of you. And this is why when that little boy was crying and said, Ali saw him, he said, oh, little boy, why are you crying? Don't you know that the entire cosmos is inside of you? So that, knowing that, but then also knowing that you are nothing in order not to get arrogant. If you can balance those two, and you have that 30 minutes where you can find. And if you can't take 30 minutes away from your 24 hours day schedule, then don't call yourself a free person. You're not a free person. You're a slave to everything else but to the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How could we not take 30 minutes a day, sleep less 30 minutes? We waste human being. We waste so much time, all of us. I'm the first one to raise my hand, the amount of time I waste. Even though I feel like I don't waste a lot of time, but I still do in comparison to the last generation of people. So in comparison to my teachers. So all of us, you can take 10 minutes from here, five minutes from here to get that 30 minutes a day and reflect. Reflect on yourself. Reflect on the blessings. That's one of the things that you need to do is shukr. We're becoming a, a generation of ingrates where we don't have shukr. We have to people, people of gratitude. And shukr, just reflect on what Allah has given you, right? And for example, now, every day I'm like, subhanAllah, what a blessing voice is. Just to be able to speak. Because when I wake up, I can't even speak. It takes me half an hour in order for my voice to get going. It's been like two weeks, right? What a blessing. What a blessing to have digestion. What a blessing not to have asthma and breathe normally. All of these blessings, if you try to count the blessings of Allah, you will not be able to count them. But also, Allah can take those blessings away from you as well. And there's no end to that either. So if you la in shakartum la azidanakum, if you're grateful, Allah will give you more to be grateful of. So finding yourself by 30 minutes a day, reflecting on yourself, reflecting on the blessing that Allah has given you, reflecting on the abilities that you can do. Aim high. Aim high. One of the and this again comes back to the same point. Rumi said, aim high, but always remember that a piece of hay cannot pick up a mountain. Know the reality as well. Don't fool yourself, but don't aim low. But don't aim for impossible. Don't aim for impossible. Have high ambition, but know your limitation as well, right? So inshallah, I think that that's the starting point. And once you reflect on that, things will come because one of the biggest thing you can do you, is, is this, a lot of people might think it sounds like insanity, but talk to yourself. And really, you talk to yourself, it makes a difference. And that's the, the 30 minutes that you have when there's nobody there. Just make sure nobody catches you and put you on Instagram. And you'll be like the madman of the city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Han, how are you? How's it going? Uh, but no, really talk to yourself. You know, uh, I, I mentioned this to one time, but a, a few months ago, I had, um, I had a shipment in. Uh, these guys that you hire, they kind of dipped. And I had hundreds of boxes to take into the warehouse. I'm like, my God. And it was becoming dark and I had to take them all in. So I said, okay, I'll do it. I have a broken rest. When I was young, I jumped from a second story building. Because, you know, you have one son, you watch all those stupid Indian movies. So you actually think you can jump. So I did and I broke my arm from here and here. So whenever I pick a lot of heavy weight, it start, the pain start coming back. So that night I came home, I was like in pain for three, four, five days, six days, it's going back, I'm like, so one day I was sitting and I just said, I started talking to my hand. I said, look, 
you have a right over me. I, I'm not supposed to overwork you. And I did. I'm sorry. And it was really, it was a crazy moment. It was a good moment. But uh, nobody recorded it. I was make sure the roads are locked. Nobody can hear me. Um, so in any case, it was very interesting. There was this healing that I felt in my heart for that. And literally within a few days, it disappeared, the pain. And I realized that there is a connection and we neglect ourselves a lot. Yet, if somebody else has pain in their hand, how's your hand doing? Oh, you bro- oh my God, is, is you have pain, we call them, how's your hand now? Or is it better? But we don't ask our own hand. We don't talk to ourselves. So we always neglect ourselves. But with other people, oh, so-and-so, how are you? How's it going? But what about yourself? Do you really talk to yourself? Do you take care of yourself? We are all guilty of that. And this is the first step of getting to know yourself, is to respect your own body parts, to respect your face. And this is why, you know, the things that are per- not permissible in Islam is because of the honor of the body parts. It's because of that. You know? Like now people, I saw a guy, he had his old ear cut out, and there was a giant hole in here. Poor guy, non-Muslim guy. And I read that, this is the ear that Allah has given you. It's designed by God. Don't change the creation of Allah. You can't do something that make it more beautiful. You can't, right? So there's a sacredness about everything. So treat yourself with that long answer for a short question. Apologize. I hope that was not how it happened. Okay, if there's no question, well, there's a sister. <clears throat> If you could describe the Abd of Allah, and I know you're big on poetry. I've always enjoyed your poetry, either it's from Rumi or Iqbal. If you could share with us if any of the poets said something about being the servant of Allah SWT. Yeah, that's a beautiful question. Um, the, the Abdullah is. The, the great, the best name to give your children are names that have Abd and Ham, like Ubida wa Humida, like Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahim, Abdul Malik, Abdul Awal. All of those names that the Abd with the name of Allah. And then the other one is like Muhammad, Hamid, Mahmud, that which has praise in it. These are the highest uh, names that to be given to your children. But the Abdullah, the station, is the the greatest, better than any poet that could say it, is what Allah said. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has many names. We know there's uh, one of the shiukh in, in England printed a book, uh, 313 names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's books with 99 names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, readily available. But in the Quran, Muzammil, Mudathir, Ya Ayyul Mudathir, Ya Ayyul Muzammil. The Quran, Taha, Mahmud, Maqam al Mahmuda, Ahmed, his name in the previous scripture. So all of these names of the Prophet, all of these names, beautiful names. But the greatest night, so the Prophet had the worst day and greatest night. The worst day of his life was Taif. That was the worst day. He said, That was the worst day of my life. What happened in Taif? The greatest night of his life was Isra and Miraj, where he went. He passed Sidratul Muntaha, the tree of the furthest limit. Couldn't go no more. Nobody could go anymore. Jibreel, right? Go of Jibreel or Bepar and Darpayam. Go of Rau Rau, Man Harifi Tuniam. So at that point, the Prophet said, Jibreel, come, let's go. Why did you stop? We got to go. I'm not done yet. He said, no, no, no. I can't go no more. This is 
This, you are, you're in a league of your own. This is, nobody has ever crossed this. He said, come. You were just showing off your wings to me. Come follow me. گفت بیرون زین حده خوشفر من گرزنم پره بسوزد پر من He said, oh my beautiful illustrious friend Prophet Sallam in Jibreel were friends He said, oh my illustrious friend If I take one more step forward from here all my wings and feathers will burn and I will fall This is you, you go further In this night where the Prophet goes so close to his Lord in the Divine Presence, what does Allah say to him? How does he address him? Subhanallah asra bi abdi laylan min al masjid al haram il al masjid al aqsa. Glory be to the one who take his abd. Why did Allah use abd? Why not Muhammad? Why not Mahmoud, his name on the Day of Judgment? Maqam and Mahmouda. Why not? Because the greatest station that you can earn is becoming Abdullah, that perfect slave of God. Because he took servitude to the level of perfection. And that's why Allah called him on this night, Abd. He didn't call him Muhammad. He called him Ahmed. He called him Abd. He taking his servant on this night to Masjid al-Aqsa. So that is the reason why this is the highest station. To achieve is to become that perfect servant. We will all fall short of that. But at least we should imitate to be a servant. An obedient servant at least. Inshallah. Sisters, brothers. All right. All right. So let the tasbeet. You want to explain okay. it? Okay. Here we go. <coughs> what do you want to do? Yeah. All right. So I'll just do the. Yeah. Yeah. Bismillah. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin tib al-qulubi wa dawa'iha. وعافيه الابدان وشفائها والنور الابصار والضياءها وقوت الارواح وغذائها وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم اني اعوذ بك من الهم والحزن واعوذ بك من العجز والكسل واعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل واعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اني اسالك العفو والعافيه والمعافاه الدائمه في ديني ودنيا واهلي ومالي اللهم استر عوراتي وامن روحاتي اللهم احفظني من بين يدي من خلفي وعن يمي من شمالي ومن فوقي وأعوذ بيذمتك أن أقتال من تحني يا الله يا رحم الرحمين we extend our hands in prayer in these blessed nights in this blessed place with these blessed people يا رحم الرحمين يا الله we are a bunch of فقراء bunch of دعفاء we are poor people we have nothing and we come to you with broken hearts يا الله يا الله in this crowd you know the affair of everyone's heart Ya Allah, you know there are people here that are suffering, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, I mean from depression, from sadness, from financial difficulty. There are people who are suffering from their children. There are people who are suffering with their parents. There are people who are suffering with their, they're, they're confused about their, their religion. They're confused about their identity. Ya Allah, there are people here tonight that they don't have any door to go and this is why they came to your house, Ya Allah, to the masjid, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, I mean on this blessed night of Laylat al-Qadr and we are asking Ya Allah from you. We're asking from you, Ya Allah. We come to you, we're not going to ask for anything small. We're not going to ask for anything insignificant. We come to the door of the most generous. Akramur Akramin, Ya Allah. You're the most generous of the generous. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimin. We ask you to put the ointment of healing in every broken heart, Ya Allah, tonight. Everyone who's here, whatever they're suffering, Ya Allah, alleviate their suffering, Ya Allah, and put your light in their hearts. Ya Allah, make the way for them that they get to know themselves and they get to know you and keep them happy in this dunya and keep them happy in the hereafter. Ya Allah, make us all amongst the people. That on the day of judgment, Ya Allah, you are pleased with us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is proud of us, Ya Allah, on that day. Ya Allah, don't make us amongst the people of Shikawa, amongst the people, Ya Allah, of, that will go to the 
a fire of hell, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us amongst the people that we get our folder in our right hand, Ya Allah. Ya Rahimin, that you will say, uh, we are amongst those, Radi Allah, who are aduhan, that we are pleased with your decree. You're pleased with our action, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us amongst the people of Jannah. Ya Allah, put us in the neighborhood of the Sayyidina Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Put us in the neighborhood of Bibi Aisha Siddiqa. People in the neighborhood of Fatima to Zahra. Ya Allah, put us in the neighborhood of Bibi Khadija to Al-Kubra. Ya Allah, put us in the neighborhood of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali. Ya Allah, put us in the neighborhood of Abu, Abu Dhal al-Ghifari, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we want to see these people. You want to meet these people. You want to be in their presence. Ya Allah, Ya Rahimin. Ya Allah, don't deprive us from seeing your face. Ya Rahman Rahimin, from seeing your face like the full moon, Ya Allah, in the, on, on the day of judgment. Ya Allah, don't deprive us from your Rahma. Ya Allah, from the Shifa of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, don't deprive us from your shifa. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimin. Ya Allah, forgive us for any sin that we have done. Ya Allah, protect us. Protect our children, Ya Allah. Protect our children, Ya Allah. Protect our offspring until the Yawm al Qiyamah from all of the facade and fitna of their time. Ya Allah, make him amongst the Salihin wa Salihat, amongst the righteous people. Make our children, our offspring until the day of judgment, beneficial members to their societies, Ya Allah. Make him amongst the people of Fitra, the day they, lose, they don't lose anything that they have that you have put in them. Keep them on the path of fitr, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Rahimin. Ya Allah, remove confusion from the heads and from the hearts of young people, all of the Muslim around the country and around the globe, Ya Allah, who are confused about themselves, about their identity, about who they are. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Rahimin, keep us on the path of fitra. Protect us. Ya Allah, protect us from all of the evil of this society and give us the best of this society, Ya Rahman Rahimin. Make us, make our children beacons of light, Ya Allah, that we become a guide. We guide people and bring them to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ya Allah, make us amongst the people that we love you and you're pleased with us. Make us amongst the people that we fall in love with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Allah, that we truly love him, Ya Allah, from our, the bottom of our hearts. Ya Allah, make us amongst the people that every time we want to do sin and disobey you, we remember you and we run away. And we fafirru ilallah and we run to you, Ya Allah. You're like Yusuf alayhi salam, run to you and you open all of the doors that were closed, Ya Allah. Open the doors to you, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahim. I mean, that are how have us asked. Illa, that it too. We know that all the doors are closed except your door. That's the only door that's open. And we're coming to you, Ya Allah. We're coming to your door, Ya Allah. Don't turn us away. Don't turn us back, Ya Allah. Because of whoever. I know. We know, Ya Allah, that tonight there's somebody here who has a broken heart. There's somebody here. Because of that one broken heart, forgive all of us, Ya Allah. Because of that one person that is depressed, Ya Allah, forgive all of us. Because of that one person, Ya Allah, that is having a hard time in this dunya, traveling through this world, Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah, because of that one person. Because of that one person who has lost someone, that they are suffering from the loss of a family or a friend or a loved one, Ya Allah, forgive all of us, Ya Allah. And with you, Everything is easy. Allahumma yassir wa la tu'asir. Ya Allah, make the affairs of life easy and not hard for all of us. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala sayyidina wa habibina wa qurrati al-ayunina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jmain. Barahmatik ya arhamar rahimin. Taqabbalallahu jazakallahu khayn.